This is the American Wing Girls Modeling Podcast, episode number four. Podcasting live from Northeast Texas, the home of the Cowboys, Cowgirls, Texas Country Music, and beautiful Texas Sunsets. This is the American Wing Girls Podcast, a weekly podcast about the modeling and promotional industries. And now, here's your host, friend, and business branding expert, Paul Robertson. Well, welcome to this fourth episode of the American Wing Girls Modeling Podcast. And today on the call, I have Megan Alyssa. Uh, we are going to talk about her career and, and all her um, all the things she's involved in. And I think you're going to get a very um, good uh, lesson in how you can get exposure and how you can network to build your career. Um, I would consider Megan a, a, an expert in doing those things and using social networks to do that. So uh, how are you doing, Megan? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's pretty hot where I am. I don't know if it's where everybody else is, but I'm trying to stay cool. But where where are you at? I'm actually still in Maine, where it usually snows, but it's actually probably it probably got close to ninety today. So yeah, I'm in Texas, hot. so uh, yeah, I, I know I know about hot weather. It's it's actually <laughs> not so bad this year. Last year was like fire everywhere, and this year is just kind of cool and stuff. So um, yeah. All right, let's let's start a little bit about where you're from and a little bit about your background. Like, where are you from? Um, I grew up in a small town called Orono. It's probably, let's see, two and a half hours north of Portland. Uh, there's a university there, which a lot of people kind of think it's a big town, but um, without the university, there's, I mean, I had 77 kids in my graduating high school class, so it's pretty small. But the university brings in about 10,000 students, probably more now. And their um, Division One hockey team is pretty okay. big. So. so, yeah, so it's not that small. Um, aren't no. You, no. Well, aren't you in grad school right now? Uh, I actually just applied to the University of Southern California and still waiting to hear about Keep your fingers crossed for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you want to go to California. There's a lot. Um, of... Eventually, that's, yeah, that's the... Uh, that's a possibility. Well, that would make a lot of sense because there's a lot more opportunities out in California. I would, yeah. I would yep. assume. Yeah. So uh, what are you trying to study? Um, I would be enrolled in the Master's of Social Work program. Okay. Okay. So yep. uh, let's talk about uh, the Boston Bombshells. Now, for anyone out there who uh, that's listening – I actually have had done this interview with Megan before, and I didn't record the interview, so I'm trying to uh, recreate that interview because there was a lot of good stuff in it, and um, I apologize to Megan and to everyone in listening, but I uh, guess technology for you. Sometimes it just doesn't work, but uh, uh, in the last interview, we talked about the Boston Bombshells. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and your involvement in that? Um, it's actually um, one of my friends that I've met through the different contests I've done. Um, her name is Keely, and she's amazing. And we just kind of clicked, a couple of us girls, and she decided that she wanted to put together an organization to help us um, get jobs, you know, and get the name out there. We're hopefully going to build it up. And it's her and myself, and they included me, even though I'm not a Massachusetts girl. As far as I know, I'm the only girl who's not from Massachusetts, and the two other girls are from right outside of Boston, and we're going to try and get each other jobs and kind of promote the modeling name in that company and hopefully build it up in the New England area and hopefully turn it into something pretty big. Right. Uh, just so y'all are kind of helping each other. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a modeling agency, right? It's like a small a modeling agency that your friend started, is, or is it just kind of like a network? It's probably more um, right now as a network. I mean, obviously, if we got big and couldn't take, like, if we can't take as many jobs as we get or whatever, then we would obviously be looking for more girls. But as of right now, um, I think we're sticking with the four that we have and then hopefully doing, like, promo events at clubs or, you know, and just getting our name out there at the same time and, you know, making a little bit of money on the side too, you know, hopefully at some point people can, if they're looking for a certain type of girl to do something, they can check out Boston Bombshells and be like, oh, this is exactly the girl I was looking for. I was like her. You know, okay. but right now, you know, it's pretty, just getting started. 
haven't even been a year yet. It's just been a couple months, so. Okay. All right. Uh, what kind of work are you try girls trying to get? Is it kind of like promo work, or is it kind of like magazine and print? Probably. I mean, I would take anything. I can't speak for the other girls, you know, but um, I used to do a lot of um, promotional work through um, a company I used to work for called Whiskey Girls, and uh, we did a lot of, um, like, events at car shows, or um, we did a lot of volunteer work to um, make a wish foundation, stuff like that, just to get our name out, um, and that worked out good. To, I definitely wouldn't turn down anything if someone was like, oh, I'd like you to be in my magazine. I'd be like, sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's, let's let's get into more about you. What kind of model would you classify yourself as primarily? I, I know you're in a bunch of different things, but what's, what, what would you classify yourself primarily as? I mean, I think as much like fun as I have doing glamour and fashion, there's really not enough... Um, out there, which is really too bad because it's really a lot of fun to do, but a lot of people are looking for lingerie models and bikini models and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you kind of have to go with what the need is or what the want is, um, mm -hmm. although fashion stuff can be really fun, but there's just really not enough drive for it. So I, I don't want to, like, classify myself as anything because I'm pretty much you know, willing to do anything and try new things, and if a photographer that I've shot with before is like I have this really cool idea you know can we exchange you know your time for my photos I would probably be up for it if we could work out a schedule you know it's it's not I'm not making like a lot of money off of it as of right now mm -hmm. uh, but I'm willing to put in the work to eventually hopefully get there yeah. okay um I remember from our last conversation that you said uh you can, I asked you, how did you get started in the industry, which I'm going to ask you to answer that again. And I remember you talking mm -hmm. about a little about you were you were in dance in school. Like you was a, were you a cheerleader or were you it was a different kind of dance? I, no, I was a cheerleader um, through high school and just, I mean, briefly in college. But actually, when I moved down to Southern Maine, um, I found out about a semi-pro football team or cheering squad, dance squad, and I was like, you know, why not? Like, let's just try it. And it actually ended up opening a few doors for me. And now they have a semi-pro football squad down, I mean, a basketball squad down there, um, the main Red Claws. And so it's kind of like a growing industry. I haven't gone back to do it yet, but you know, it's always in the back of my mind, like, maybe I should do this again. But, yeah, it opened the door um, to a lot of things. We did a calendar annually, and a lot of the photographers um, that I worked with for that were like, you know, maybe you should try this. Is it something you'd want to do? And I was like, oh, you know, I, lo I loved it. Like, why not? You know, and it started out basically just as a hobby. But, you know, if it's something that you love to do and you have a passion for doing it, you know, even if it's part-time, I think you should, you know, give it your all when you're able to. Yeah, uh, I, I I find that interesting because you talk about the passion. Uh, this I think modeling is a passion as well as a career. I think you gotta really mm -hmm. like to do this because it's not necessarily an easy road. I mean, I guess there are yeah. stories of those that kind of got lucky and just went straight to the top, but it's kind of a it's kind of a difficult process because it's very competitive, and you know I've heard other it models that's cutthroat too. So you kind of gotta love what you're doing, don't you? Yeah, oh yeah, and you kind of have to be secure. I mean, obviously everybody has flaws and everyone has insecurities, and I mean, I would be silly to sit here and say, oh, I love my body, it's perfect, or, you know, I love my eyes, or whatever it is. I mean, everybody is different. But the thing is, is you kind of have to have a tough shell because no matter how beautiful someone is or how, you know, there's always a critic. And people think it's like this easy thing or you always have to be like, a perfect 10 or whatever and the th truth is is like you don't like people like curvy girls and really skinny girls and this, everybody's different everybody's beautiful in their own way and if it's really something that you love to do you kind of have to put the haters in the back burner or use it as your motivation and be like seriously you don't think I can do this like wait a minute and I'll show you because I can't like and it's constant like I just did a competition um not too long ago and one it was just a um online competition for uh, my friend's um, 
clothing line and it's Hot Bay Boutique and I won and there was a lot of great girls in the competition and some of them I was friends with and the critics were horrible. I mean, people were writing nasty things on under people's pictures and you really? know, I got, yeah, I got it got pretty bad. I mean, if I didn't let it roll off my shoulders, I could understand why people would be like, I'm done. Like people just the little things like my shoe not looking like it didn't fit. But they didn't understand that I was on the like the tip of my toes, and that's why it looked like the shoe didn't fit. Mm-hmm. So I was going to waste my time explaining things. Like people will not pick you and try and tear you apart to bring you down, and you just kind of have to, you know, let it go. And people are going to support you no matter what. Like your true fans are going to support you no matter what. And the majority of the girls out there that I've come across are great girls, and we all kind of try and support each other. And you know, yeah, I mean, maybe it's not the best photo, but you know, you're learning, and I'm learning, and I get ideas from other models, and I get ideas from other photographers, and, you know, it's it's a learning process, and you can always improve. There's always room for improvement. You might have some amazing photos from one shoot, and the next shoot might not go so great, but, you know, you can still love them and appreciate them, like a work in progress. I don't think it's, right. you know, anything people can't work on, and maybe that's why I like it. It's always a challenge, you know? And and um that's that is a subject that I'm I think that I'm going to ask a lot of the people I interview. It's this yeah. it's the creativity part of the of creating the photos. Like I am like I I have a, a camera and I'm learning how to do photography and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you, like you're saying, it's like hard it's hard coming up with I like good ideas, good locations, and the right person to fit that picture or the thought that you have in your mind. And it's like. Right. I think it would be really beneficial if everyone kind of shared tips about how they can you know, how they come up with the uh, ideas for the photos. Um, I've looked through your portfolio just today, and I've seen some new photos that I really, really liked. And I just, I, I you know, I, I like to commend people for doing great work or just taking a chance and doing something different, you know. And um, I like, I'm just like you though. Like I've, I've actually seen. Like these competitions where I, I would go photo on a fit picture, and then when you read in the comments, like there are some really big wars. Like these girls are going after each other, and or this girl is supporting this girl, and she's talking bad about your picture or, or whatever. And it's like, wow, it's like really, <laughs> uh, y'all right. are taking this a little too seriously. <laughs> but I guess it is right. a big deal, though. I, I, I guess I, I don't. I guess I just don't understand why it's so important. But I guess if you're getting the exposure, you won't. You want to win, or you want your friend to win. So, uh, but yeah, uh, the next question I was going to ask that from that interview we had before was talking about the importance of networking and getting exposure because mm-hmm. because I see you all the time. You're out there busting your butt. You're getting people to vote for you on these pictures, and you're. I think it's the the two sites that you're really active on are Playboy Miss Social and uh, let me see what's the other name of that. Uh, Miss Social Network is that what it's called? Yes. Yes. Uh, can you t- talk to us about those sites and the exposure that comes from those, and how you network online to get the uh, to get the support to actually be very relevant? Cause I, I know on Miss so- Social Network, I think you're in the top, what, twenty, or you're in the you're in the top of that, right? Um, I believe last I knew I'm in the top four for overall votes. Uh-huh. I believe. Um, obviously, that could have changed. I haven't checked it um, in a while. But basically, um, one of my friends, probably now two years ago, found out about Playboy and the social and was like, I've always been a fanatic of Playboy. It's always been something I want to do or at least go to the mansion. And I've always loved it, supported it. I think it's great. So it kind of was like, sure, why not? I'll give it a whirl. And from that, I met some great girls, and I had a great time with the competition. Um, Playboy, obviously, the name speaks for itself. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. And they're pretty tough on, if you don't have anything nice to say, they're going to get right on it. And they're going to make sure, they take care of their contestants. And if there's, you know, feuds and stuff, they don't want it on their site. They don't want to affiliate it. Like, you know, they want like, good girls who are proud to represent the company, who are proud to, you know, support each other. And I made some really good friends from that. And one of the girls who actually won was like, well, listen, you know, I did this other competition first. It's called Miss Social Network. You should do that. I built up my fan base. So I was like, cool, I'll check it out. 
So I checked it out. Basically, you create your own profile. You have a list of um, your own fans, and they can write on your wall. It's kind of similar to Facebook, but the difference is, is that you can bring up your gallery. So they can see your work. Photographers can see your work. Other models can see your work. And um, you can keep in touch with your fans. I mean, you can do that stuff on Facebook, too. But it's kind of all in one condensed area. So, like, I have tons of pictures on Facebook. They don't all necessarily pertain to modeling, but this particular site does. And they do a monthly competition. Um, voters earn tokens. I think it's two a day, and they cast them for you. And um, I met some great people and won a title this past February. Really? Yep. And we'll be competing for the overall title uh, here in January. So some a lot of exciting things. But let me tell you, it boosted up my fan base, um, got me some great connections. So, I mean, my friend Bree was right. She was, you know, like, this is really a good place to start. And I don't want to say it's, like, easier than Playboy in the Social, but because it wasn't. It was, I mean, I competed for three months before I won a title. Um, right. And I competed hard, like, you know. But, um. Yeah, it was definitely a good stepping stone, I guess. It makes it, I guess, more like on an intimate level. Like everyone's kind of there. It's easy to network with people because they all have their own profiles too. Right. You know, Playboy and the Social is all over Facebook. So it kind of, um, and, you know, they have a lot of fan bases already. So. And, but, and I know you, like you're saying, you, you weren't one of the first girls on the site, and it, and it but you did rise to the top, so it's not necessarily who's on there first. Because I know a lot of things, if, if you're one of the first on it, you're going to dominate most of the time. But, like, what you're saying is you just busted your butt, and you're at the top because you, that, yeah. you busted your butt more than the other girls. Well, I wanted a title, and I knew I wanted a title, and I really wanted it to be, you know, I'd get really hung up on, like, December. December's my birthday month, so I was like, okay, December is going to work. Well, it didn't work, and then it was like, well, you know, okay, January, let's just push it, because your fan base is ready. Like, they want it for you almost as much as you want it for yourself, and if they're that ready to go behind you again, you know, you kind of have to be like, all right, like, they work hard, just as hard as me. I'll put it back in. Well, I ran again in January, and I didn't run. And so, really, my fans were like, this time, like, this is it. It's February. And I was like, I don't – it takes a lot out of you. Like, you're promoting yourself. You're putting up new pictures, and you reach a certain vote goal. And, you know, it, it's a lot of networking. And I was like, I honestly don't know if I can do it in another month. I really honestly wanted to take a month off and just kind of regroup. And they really, like, pushed me. And I have a really good friend who um, was Miss May in 2011, and she just won the 2012 – um, overall title at the social network and she was like Megan come on one more month and if you don't get it then I will leave you alone and so I was like okay fine <laughs> one more month and if they hadn't like pushed me you know I don't know where I'd be now but I actually got the title in February wow so. well congratulations congratulations on thank that thank you thank you very much so um the uh these sites you like you said they have photographers and they have other people on them on there it's a great way to get exposure is it not to uh get work maybe maybe yeah uh, um i definitely think it's yeah um you can type in like for example maine and photographers and models that are listed in maine will pop up and you can check and see if people have worked with them before or whatnot and also like when i went out to california earlier i had talked to a couple of photographers and networked with them and it didn't kind of pan out, but I had some modeling references from that site that I could back them. Yes, I've worked with a photographer. It was great. Or no, I wouldn't recommend it. Or I don't even know who this person is. So it's a good way to kind of um, stay get safe. Some people to work with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I, if I was a listener, I know one question that would be popping in my head. How exactly do you. Uh, build a following in order to get the support in order to win these competitions. And I know you use Facebook a lot. Could you talk us talk to us a little to, talk to us a little bit about that? Do you have a first do you have a uh, a Facebook page anymore or are you just using your profile? No, I have a fan page. You have okay, okay. Because I was looking for it and I couldn't find it and I and I was like I know she has one. I know she has a lot of followers on it too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm almost at 10,000. Right. Um, and, and maybe I'm just not searching right, but... Uh, I I can give you the address. 
yes, g- give us the air address, and I'll have a link uh, in, on this podcast um, below this uh, right. audio. It's on www.facebook.com slash pbbunnygem. Okay. All right, and I'll have a link where people can go visit that um, uh, because I was going to uh, look at it and – I want people to understand that a fan page can be used for more than just like a vanity profile, like where you just post pictures and people say, I like it, that it can actually right, be right. used, you know, it can be used for to build a following to actually do stuff to help your career along in ways to get exposure and networking. And I know you do this yeah. better than anybody that I know of. Um, so Aww, could you just talk, talk, to, yeah, talk to us about what you do on Facebook to build that following? Because a lot of people are like got 500 friends and they're like, how do I get thousands, thousands of friends? Because I don't understand how these other girls are doing it so fast and I'm stuck, you know, on a couple hundred people, you know. Yeah, you kind of have to keep plugging away at it. But um, one tip I can give you is that you should be willing to share other people's pages. I share a lot of my friends, um, and we've kind of built up a network together. And if I share their profile on my page, they're mm-hmm. going to share the profile on their page. Or if they have a contest going. I'll share that contest picture on my fan page in exchange for them for sharing just my fan page. Um, you know, and a lot of my friends have 50,000 followers or even 100,000 followers or, you know, and so I think definitely winning monthly titles helps, um, but being willing to help promote others mm-hmm. is huge. And if you're not taking, if you're not like competing in a competition, but you're willing to promote, girls i mean promote anyone and be honest about it like don't say i'm going to completely back you unless you're going to completely back that person but if you're like listen i'm going to share you but there's also three other of my friends i'm going to share then they know up front and it builds good rapport so people aren't like oh well she said she'd only share me but she shared all these other girls like right Mm -hmm. i know what you're saying yeah so you basically if you're willing to sell or promote yourself you need to be willing to promote other people too it can't be all about you and it ends up paying off in the long run you know the reason why emmy was willing to back me she had already won her title so i was like i could learn a lot from this girl you know how did she build up her fan base you know and she kind of took me under her wing we're great friends now we call each other sitters because we had a typing it was supposed to be sister but we had a typo so now we just go with sitter so we uh-huh. were each other sitters and and she's been awesome like you know, she definitely took me under her wing. Now she's competing for Playboy and the Social, and she was like, a lot of girls are upset with her. Like, why are you competing? You're throwing everything off. And I was like, I think it's great she's competing. She has a huge fan base. She could definitely take the title. And it's a title that I want, too. But if my friend wins, I win, too. And if she wins, her fans are going to be like, okay, who supported her? Well, Meg supported her. So it's kind of like a win-win situation when it all gets said and done. Like, the more friends that I have that when Playboy and the Social, that's only increasing my chances. I see it that way, you know? Yeah, I got a... Okay, I got a few questions. Okay. Number yeah. one. All right. You said that some people were giving her slack for entering the competition. Why? Yeah, she ended it. But why? I mean, it's her... It's. I mean, what, what's that got to do with them? I don't understand that. Because I think since she has such a huge fan base that that could throw off what other people, or maybe some people that were supporting other people are now supporting her. I mean, I really don't know the, like, the... Oh, they feel like since they've helped her build her fan base, they don't want to have to compete against her. I don't know if it's that or if it's like she has fans who are more loyal to her. And since uh-huh. she was competing, they were voting for other girls. But now that she is competing, they're back voting for her. I mean, I don't really, like I said, I kind of, I'm still competing and I'm still trying to get my name out there and I'm still doing competitions. But if you notice, I mean, I'm sharing everybody in the comp, anybody that I'm friends with in the competition. Um, you know, there's a girl that I'm hoping to join her um, modeling group. She's Hemi Girl, and she's amazing, and I love her to pieces, and so I'm promoting her. Of course, Emmy's like my sister, so I promote her, too. And they all have that understanding, like, you know, I'm going to promote you, you, you. You know, I have my girls. I'm going to support all of them. And they're all very understanding of that. But I think, you know, I'm not saying that just because I'm promoting the five of them that they all support each other. You know what I mean? So they don't right. hold anything against me, I don't think, but they might be like, oh, well, Emmy's coming in last minute 
a 60,000 person fan base, that's going to throw Oh, off. okay. I get what you're saying. Fan base. They yeah. probably wouldn't have much of a, they probably wouldn't carry as much as she would have got in at the beginning. Is that what you're saying? I guess so. I guess that they knew what she was up against, but like she came in, it was a total disadvantage. And I mean, in the first like two days was 10 places higher than I was. Uh-huh. And I was like, you know, if you can do this, you just got to do it. And she's a lot older than me. And her argument was, listen, like you girls are young. Some of you are 20, 22. I'm approaching 40. Like I've got to do this now. So, and I was like, go girl. Like, if right. you <laughs> Jump in. And get that far. Like, obviously, you know, the ball's in her court, you know, and she is the first one to promote someone else. And she's, you know, played a huge part in these, some of the success that I've had. And I don't forget it. Like, I mean, if she came to me and if it came down to her and me and she was like, listen, I really want this, I'll back you next month, chances are I'd probably be like, okay, you know? Right. Uh, you know, I'm willing to, like, take one for the team, so to speak, and just back off. And, you know, it's not like she jumped in and was, like, a hundredth place and was struggling, you know, but she just jumped in. And I think last I knew she was an eight. Like, so obviously she's she's got the fan base. She's got the supporters. And I think that's great. And she deserves it. I mean, she'd be, she's a great girl, you know. Mm-hmm. You have sparked my interest. Uh, I got a few questions in my mind that's kind of circulating, and these this, we didn't talk about this in this in the last interview. So um, a lot of this is going to be like like right off the cuff. Um, first, let me go back to a question I, I had before I asked that question. <laughs> uh, if say if I was say if I was a female and I was a model and I had a fan page and I had one hundred or two or three hundred friends, I know that a lot of girls are going to say to themselves. I like yeah the I'll share for you and you share for me thing works if you have people but if you don't have anybody nobody wants to share for you you know what I'm saying because you're getting more out of it than they are say you have ten thousand right. friends and they have two hundred friends well that's not really going to be very beneficial to you I have I have some suggestions my of my own but what would be your suggestion for those for those girls just trying to start off a fan page um. I mean, I would I would find a model who has a ton of friends or fans or whatever and ask them maybe to join a couple groups that they're in. Um, I share my page on occasion, not too often, but if I'm in between competitions, I'll share my page in a bunch of groups. I'm in more groups than I probably should be in. And that way it builds up your fan base without having to ask someone. Um, but I know a lot of girls who will say only 15,000 fans and above I'll share with. And they've got right. like hundred thousand fans. So if they have over a hundred thousand fans and they're still willing to network with someone who has fifteen thousand, I mean that's huge. I understand why they wouldn't want to I mean I'm only barely at ten thousand. So there's a lot of girls who are like, Yeah no but I still keep in touch with them and we're still I still consider them friends. And if it's a competition photo they usually aren't too bad about sharing it and literally could blow, you know, some competitions out of the water. But I would definitely um try and befriend someone or even like the social network like you don't have to compete but you can create a profile um start networking there um nobody's listed by fans there so you know you can list your fan page maybe you only have 200 people but we all had 200 people at once you know we only right. had four likes once we were all there once and you kind of just have to pr- be your biggest promoter in the beginning and still you know promote yourself along the way but um You know, there's a ton of girls who have 100 likes who I'm sure would be willing to share, especially in those groups. Um, So you just kind of have to put yourself out there. And I think creating a profile on your social network would be a fantastic first step. Okay, uh, quickly, let me me throw a few, my few cents in there. Um, Yeah. One way, like you're saying, is don't always be on the ask, give me, give me, give me, give me, you know, give me this, give me that. Start building relationships with girls without asking them for something. And once you become more acquainted and you're more friends, you know, and you're more supportive of them, then when you say, hey, girl, I just started a fan page and I really love your support to help me launch it, they're going to be more willing to help you than if you just some stranger that said, hey, will you promote for me? And I have 100 friends. And I, because they're going to look at you like, who are you? Why should I help you out? Whereas if they knew you already and they already know that you're supporting them and the things they're doing, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll help you out. You know, because they know it's everybody's got to start somewhere. 
So that's kind of like what right, you're right. saying. You know, and, you, and you're saying don't only use Facebook, but use like Miss Social Network and all these other networking platforms in order to to do that. And I know that works because I, I, I do a lot of like build blogs and stuff. And like a lot of people mm-hmm. in that niche ask the question, how do I get people to my blog when, you know, I have nothing, you know, I don't have, you know, how do I get traffic to my blog? Well, the best and fastest way is to befriend and network with other bloggers that have an audience. And then once you become friends with them, you can ask them to like, let you guest post on their blogs. And that's what gets you your audience because their audience comes to your blog to see what you're about. And then they see you as an, uh, as an expert and authority on what you're talking about. And then they follow you and then it grows from there. Well, it's the same thing with this. You know, if you go out and you say, Hey girl, this is my work, you know, and you just kind of, follow them and support them and everything they're doing and make sure they know it, you know, send them personal messages, whatever, but just do, you give to them first. And then when you say, Hey girl, I'm thinking about launching my own blog, my own fan page, will you support me? They're going to be more like to say, heck yeah, I will help you out. Cause you've been helping me, you know, yeah. that, and that's kind of like what my position is on that. Another thing right. you can do is, um, find like, uh, Find other people who are similar. Like if you have a hundred friends, you're you're probably gonna like, these are probably your friends that you ask to to follow your page to help you out. Well, you're gonna have more of a relationship with that hundred than that girl who's gonna have a relationship with that fifty thousand because you probably right. know those hundred more. Well, if you could find five or ten girls with like two or three hundred friends and you all help each other out, basically sharing each other's stuff, you're probably gonna be able to build your fan page faster. So instead of going to the girl with the fifty thousand. Go with somebody who has like a thousand, and then you help them, and they help you. I, that's kind of yeah. like another way to do it. Um, I just yeah. know a lot of people got those kind of questions because anybody who has a fan page, uh, it starts off with, "How do I get more fans?" You know, <laughs> and um, yeah. that's my sense. Now, there's one other thing about that I want to ask you. When you say join groups, you're joining mm-hmm. groups. What are you doing? You're going. You're joining a modeling group or or whatever photography group. And you're going there and just are you are you just saying, hey, will you like my page or are you in there networking or what what are you doing in those groups? I guess it depends on what the group is. I mean, I'm probably, like I said, I'm in tons. I'm in like a Miami photography group. Obviously, I'm probably not going to get to Miami anytime soon. So we post ideas. Um, yeah, on occasion, we like my page. Yes, we like my contest photo. Yes, it's called like for likes or shares for shares. Um, and you can find people in those groups, like you said, who have 200 fans or who have 2,000 fans and just kind of gauge it off that. Also, you know, kind of being willing to, like I said, take one for the team. Like I've definitely promoted girls who haven't, who've said, oh, I'll do this for you, I'll do this for you, and they haven't. And do I network with them now? You know, no. Do I consider us friends? I mean, we're probably Facebook friends, but I promote them again. Now I won't because, you know, so you kind of find out who you can work with and who you know, not to work with. But I think out of all the relationships I've had, I've had one really bad experience with it. And so, I mean, the good outweighs the bad, you know. So I think in those Mm -hmm. groups, you're putting yourself out there. You could even post a picture. Okay, every Monday I'm going to post a new picture in these five groups. Hey, do you like my picture? Yes. Okay, if you like my picture, come join my fan page. This is my fan page. Right. You know, know? and so I think that that, you know, it just helps. And you can reach a whole lot of people. Like, I'm in a couple of groups that are, like, in a book of world records. Let's get the most, you know, people on here. And you can reach, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, with each yeah. post. So, I, I, that's, that's the reason why I brought that up. It's, it's because that analogy I just used with the bloggers, that's the same thing you would be doing with the group. Now, there's a couple things, I guess, strategies that you can use with a group. Um, mm-hmm. Like you're saying, what it ultimately all comes down to is if you're a model, it comes down to your portfolio. It comes down to your pictures because because if you say you had a if you say you had two or three hundred friends of uh, fans on your fan page, if you're posting good photos and that people like, they're going to share that photo. They're going to talk about it, and your fan it's going to grow anyway because photos right. is the probably the most viral pieces of content on Facebook. It will grow if you have good photos. Well, you could go to these groups, and there's lots of my, in like on my profile. I think I'm in maybe 30 groups. You know, there's no, I mean, I, there's really, like you're saying, there's really no reason to be in them because, but 
there is a reason to be in them is that you can, if you'll get active in those groups and like say, hey, I'm thinking about adding this photo or adding another photo to my portfolio and post two photos and say, which one would you would you think is better and get people engaged in what you're doing. Then they begin to know who you are. Then you're like, hey, join my fan page. They're probably more likely to go join your fan page. And that's what grows your fan page. Right. And yep. So- and you can also post, like, once you build up your fan base, you can post only certain pictures there. Like, if I'm in a competition and I'm like, okay, when we reach 1,000 votes or whatever it is, depending on what the competition is, I'll post a new photo. I don't post it in groups. I post it to my fan page. So that entices people to come. So mm-hmm. I get you know, you have to kind of take care of them. Like, they're the people that you go to when you're competing. Like, I might promote in groups and stuff, and I try to hit every group that I'm in at least once a week, which it sounds like that doesn't take too much, but networking takes, I mean, hours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's a lot of work. So I try to, like, do special things on my fan page. Like, I have fan of the week or fan of the month or fan of whatever, and it's actually a Facebook app, and Facebook came up with it. And it just gives the person who's been participating the most on your page a little bit of recognition. And fans love it. I mean, they think it's great. So, you know, just little things that, you know, like I've started my own group that of core supporters, and I only have like 26 people in it. But they're like my go-to would do anything for me. Right. That's really smart. That's really smart. Yeah. And they can obviously, like, give suggestions about who to add or whatever, but I have, you know, one, like, Emmy is one of my um, administrators of the page, and then one of my fans who, I mean, has done everything for me, and that's it, like, and I trust their judgment, and, I mean, I don't think it's grown at all, but the point isn't to have it grow, it's like I've got 26 people who are there, and I think that's big, I mean, a lot of people have fan pages, or, I mean, um, group pages, you'll see, like, Team Nicole or Team... Kimberly or team whatever, and they have hundreds of people in it. But how many of those people are really voting for you? Like I have ten thousand fans. Well, I had two thousand likes on my page. I mean, two thousand likes on my last photo competition, and it took me forever to get there. And I had to promote myself and promote all these other girls who were sharing it with their fans. And I was like, I have ten thousand fans, and eight thousand of them are asleep, or nine thousand. Right. You know, so a fan page looks great, but, like, how many of those people are really there? So you have to keep them engaged, too. You know, maybe do a competition on your page every once in a while for a signed photo or, you know, a lot of girls are trying to do, like, want to want to pick my photo shoot, um, you know, send me an outfit and give me an idea and I'll, you know, get the photographer and go do the shoot for you and... You know, I'll post the pictures up for my competition, but I'll also send you one since you did some of the work too. So there's all kinds of ways to keep people engaged on your page, but you don't want people you don't want people to leave. You know, like it's it sounds silly, but it's hard to keep you know your fan base going. It has you want it to grow. You don't want it to stay stagnant or like people leave. Like, well, this girl never does anything. She's you know off. You know what? So, I'm glad you said that. One of the things I do is I'm an internet marketer. And like yeah. I stay in tune with what Facebook is doing. What you're talking mm-hmm. about right now is like a really big issue right now that people don't really understand or know that's going on. So let me, for the listeners out there that's probably thinking about their fan pages, let me give you some um, some insider stuff that really is an insider, but you most people don't really realize it. Uh, number one, you have to keep your audience engaged. Like a lot of you girls out there are out there trying to get people to your page and you're not really doing much with the people who are on your page. You're kind of using like an email list instead of using it as a platform to to create an intimate relationship with your followers. Well, Facebook recently, they, they recently changed things with your fan pages that if if somebody's not active like on your page, when you put something on your timeline, they don't even get it. You have to like promote like you have to buy an ad to prom- to promote your post to get it to more people on your page now if they're not that active and not getting your stuff. And the thought process behind that is is that if somebody's not interacting with your page, they're not really all that interested in what you're posting and then you're just posting stuff on their timeline. So Facebook is using that as an excuse to make money from it to make you pay to get that information out to your fans. So it's becoming more important as ever to to do things like what she, what Meg is talking about, you need to do things with your fans to get them uh, active, to get them to respond to you. 
Um, yeah, like I, I think a great idea would be like do that picture thing. Like say, hey, I'm trying to make my, my I need to I need an idea for a new photo. Give me ideas and get them to to, to, to commenting and liking and sharing because this, what she's talking about is building a tribe. Like in internet marketing circles, uh, th this is what we say: if if you have a hundred thousand readers, that's fine. But are they fans? Are they are they a tribe members? Are they interactive? Are they doing what you ask them to do? Because you can make more money from a 500 person list than you can from a 30,000 person list if that 500 are your fans. They're raving fans for you. You can make more money from those people than you can from 30,000. That's kind of passive. They're not really much paying much attention to you. So what Megan's saying is, yeah, you may only have 2,000 Facebook fans, but what if all 2,000 of them were like, Hey, I need y'all to go vote for me, and all of them go vote. Well, that's much more powerful than having thirty thousand only having five hundred vote for you. You, you get what? Right, right. That's what she's saying. So, uh, focus on your page itself, and it'll grow because there's a little share button under everything everything that you do. If you can get them to share, you'll get more people to your fan to your page organically. You don't even have to go out and get them. If you can get the people on your page to share what you're doing. And it doesn't, yeah, it, I mean, right. So all I gotta do is click share and say, hey, go support my girl, whoever, you know, like their fan page. It's really good stuff. And then they're out promoting for you. And then you got more people that come to your page, engage with those people, and then get them to share. Next thing you know, you're growing your fan page and you're not doing anything because it's just growing organically because they're all into what you're doing. You're, you're being personal about it. And that's kind of what I hope this podcast can be is a way for people with a fan page. To like intimately get to, so they can get to know you by listening to this to this podcast, and they say, "All right, she's cool. This is where she's from. This is what she does, you know." And then the, the, then they're more likely to do what you ask them to do. So like, I, I really Megan, I was like, "This is some really good stuff." I'm glad you brought this up because this is stuff that we need to talk about. You know, how do you use Facebook the right way? And it all starts with relationships and networking. The more relationships yeah. you build, the more you're going to get done instead of just going right. out there and saying, give me, give me, give me, but you're not giving anything. You're not being showing any integrity and, and following doing what you say you're going to do. You know, I'm, I'll promote you and you only, and then you're promoting everybody else. You know, that's not, that's not going to work because like you're saying, right. you see that you're going to be like, you know what? I, I'm not supporting you anymore because you just lied to my face. So, right. but, um, and I think appreciating the fans and doing, you know, a little something that goes above and beyond. Not all the time that like, you know, if if you stop by a certain fans page every once in a while and just say, "Hey, what's up?" or like have a like a trivia Tuesday or something, and be or be like, "What's everybody's favorite movie?" and like obviously not everyone's going to interact, but it just spices things up so you're not always talking about modeling. And and a lot of the fans, you know, they know you're busy, but if you're willing to take, you know, two minutes out of your time to say something. I mean, anything. It could be anything. They're probably going to take two minutes out of their time to go like your photo the next time you ask. And a lot of models don't interact with their fans very much. And it's been a, probably one of the biggest complaints that I hear about is that, you know, this model never gets back to me or, like, whatever. And even if it's a quick, hey, how are you, or hope you guys are having a good day. And it could be in a math. Like, just write it on your fan page. Hope everyone's having a good day. This is what I'm doing. Or you know, whatever, and a lot of people check in, and like I said, they know you're busy, but at the same time, like, they want to feel like they're appreciated, too, because you wouldn't be anywhere without them, like, they're a huge part right. of your success, um, is, and a lot of fans say, well, I've never really heard from this person, or I've never done that, and then there are a few girls who are constantly answering their fans, and their fans love it, and they have a huge networking base. Yes, um, I've seen those girls, too, and I, that was something I was going to I want to talk to everyone as a male that that uses Facebook. Uh, most of the the models that do this are females, and most of the fans that follow the females are males. I mean, that's just kind of a natural thing. Have I want people who are doing this to have you ever stopped to think about what would incline a a male to want to like your fan page and listen to what you got to say when they've never met you, they've never talked to you. Never communicate with you at all. You just you have good photos, but why? I mean, you can go on the internet and look at photos all you want to. Have you, have you ever thought why somebody would actually follow you? Well, let me let me give you. Um, a but I think a lot of times, you know, people get enticed because 
like I said, like the reason why I'm doing Playboy and the Social is kind of Playboy's always been something that I've been interested in, I've always supported. So I'm thinking like these guys, you know, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them enjoy Playboy too. And how cool would it be to say, wow, I'm friends with this girl. Right. I was there when she wasn't, you know, hadn't made a name for herself quite yet. And here she is, this Playboy Playmate or whatever, or in Playboy and the Social and she's going to sign this for me, or she's going to do, you know, she's going to be at Sturgis, you know, promoting Playboy and the Social, and I'm going to be at Sturgis, and I'm going to be able to put a face to the name. Um, I had a couple friends who are in the San Francisco area, and when I went out there, they were like, would you meet us for coffee or whatever? And I was like, totally, like, I'm totally down for that. And they had an emergency on their end and couldn't quite make it, and they felt horrible, and it was fun. I wasn't like, oh, my gosh, you guys, you know. And mm-hmm. I think that's great. Like, they want to see who they're promoting in the flesh if they can. And I think that that's great. And they like to, you know, get to know you on a more personal level. And once you build that relationship, I think it helps, too. Right. See, and that's that's exactly the thing. It's the same effect that has twi- that Twitter has. Think about it. You get on Twitter and you follow a celebrity. What's the mm-hmm. thing that entices you to want to get on Twitter and follow a celebrity? It's the fact that there is an opportunity for me to connect with a celebrity that I have seen on TV or whatever, and I can actually talk to them, and they might actually talk to me back. Uh, one of the things yeah, I thought was so cool is like um, Sophia Vergara, Vergara. I'm in love with this woman, all right? And mm-hmm. I tweeted her and, and did and on something, and she tweeted back, and I was just like, that is the coolest thing. I was on Facebook saying, Sophia, just talk to me. You know, I mean, it was just kind of like, you know, wow. Well, it's that, yeah. it's, it's that. Except now you're talking about models, and every and males are infatuated with models. There's like, you know, these are these are celebrities in their own right. So when you when you think about the the dynamic, if if you have a fan page, you're basically saying, here's access to me. You be my fan, and I'll interact with you, and I can talk to you, and you talk to me. Well, if I follow you and you're and I can comment on a photo and you comment back, well, guess what just happened? I talked to you and you talked to me. That's really really cool. And I, and if you've been in Playboy Miss Social or you've been a playmate or whatever, that's really cool cuz it's kind of like I'm talking to a celebrity. There is an inherent value there for the model to engage with their fans and to encourage them to comment to message me and I'll talk to you. Now it's a lot of work, but here's the payoff. Like you're just saying, when you when you when you say, "Hey, I'm in this competition. I need your help." What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to say, "I'm going to help my friend out because I think of you as a friend, not just mm-hmm. the model that I, I'm following." If I if ever I get where I, I I think you're just a model and I don't really know you and you're not going to interact with me and whatever, why in the world would I want to do anything for you? The only reason why I might be your fan is because I've forgotten to unlike you. I mean, that's generally right, what right. the case is, you know. So the more you engage, the more people are going to love you. <laughs> you know, like some of the most successful, even YouTube videos, you know, where people are sharing their lives, they're sharing how they feel about things, they're being personal, they're commenting, they're 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 talking to their fans. Their fan base loves them, and they will do anything for them. I mean, that's just yeah. kind of what the nature of it is. Yeah, it's more work, but it's well worth it if you're really serious about this. You know, and, and you're right. I see so many models that, you know, they have a lot a nice size list, and you look at their feed and, like, two or three comments. They make a post, two or three comments. Okay, if you got 3,000 followers and you make a, 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 a post, if they're active, that it should be at least in the 50, 60 comment area, you know, and there's no comments. Yeah. And that, that tells you a lot about how much they interact with the people, you know, and it's kind of yeah. like, well, I don't, I, as a person who understands this, I don't want to follow that person because I don't want to just follow another girl. I mean, it's just like a model mayhem. Why are you befriending all these people and you don't even know them? I mean, a lot of, a lot of the big time models are like, I don't friend people just to be friending people. Stop, you know, stop asking me to be friends. Well, there's a reason because I mean, it's, what's the point? <laughs> You know, right. So, uh, I I just wanted people to understand like you you need to try to stop and understand your fault fo- your fans. Why are they following you in the first place? They they may be shy, and don't want to talk. You know, com- they, but they want to know that if they did reach out to you, that you would reach back. And if they right. know that they'll follow you and they'll do things for you, 
Um, and it's and like I said before, it's more important than ever that you actually engage because you're going you're basically losing your list if you don't get them involved. The more you right. get them involved, the more you can get your message out to people because Facebook has changed it where you're losing your fans basically because they're not going to let your message get out to them in the first place. <laughs> So, um, yeah, exactly. it's kind of everybody's like, a fan of someone, like you were saying, celebrities like Sophia Vergara. Like, you're a huge fan of her. Like, I'm a huge fan of Janet Jameson. And on Twitter, mm-hmm. she's tweeted me back a couple times, and it's made my like life like, oh my gosh, right, right, like, exactly. Uh, you know, <laughs> so you have to think of it from that perspective like, okay, I'm a fan of this person, or I'm a fan of this team. How would it make me feel if they did this for me? Well, that's the same thing that you have. It's crazy because you have this power over your fans too. Right, it's like yeah. a virtual autograph. It's kind of what it is. Like, like having like Jane, cause I'm, I follow her on on Twitter too. Like, if she was to text me back, uh, do you think I'm going to keep? I'm a favorite that tweet. I mean, I'm gonna be trying to show people. Look, she talked to me. You know, I mean, it's kind of okay. you know, it's kind of uh, kind of geeky, but it's like that's just what it is. I mean, it's kind of like this person is somebody that you know you'll never really have any access to, but they actually took time out their day to talk to you personally. You know, right. I mean, it might have just been a quick little tweet, but still, I mean, it's just kind of cool, you know? So. Oh, super cool. And Gina James talked to you? Wow. <laughs> I, I'm cool. I'm like, I'm like happy and I'm like, she didn't even talk to me, you know? I mean, just, she talked to you. That's pretty cool, you know? Just, just the thought of, yeah. it, you know? But, uh. Yeah. I, I really hope people are getting some value out of this because this I, I actually like to keep the interviews like around thirty minutes, but this but this stuff is so good and people need to hear this so badly <laughs> that I decide to let it go on because this Facebook, this strategy that people are trying to use to grow their fan base, you know, this is something that everybody's struggling with. You know, I don't struggle with it anymore because I, I, I personally think that if you have a, the the number of people you have is probably good enough if you if you can build them, make them into true fans, not just follow right. the fans, fanatics about who you are and what you're doing. And also, whenever you're trying to make money from this, like these people, like you could say, hey, guys, I just read uh, The Hunger Games. Please go to my blog and click my link and go buy The Hunger Games. And then you get an affiliate commission off of the books. But guess what? They trust that this book is good and that they're not wasting their money. Even though you, they're not paying you, you're just getting a commission from it. There is ways to make money from your fans if you will share good stuff with them because they actually trust you. That's another blogging tip that you know, I think people aren't really taking advantage of is that if you have these big fan bases and they love you, they're going to take your recommendations. Hey, I just watched this really good movie. You need to go rent this movie on Netflix. If you don't have Netflix... Here, click my affiliate link and go sign up for Netflix. I mean, you know, there's a lot of ways of doing it, but, I mean, there's power in a relationship, and that's what we're talking about, doing building relationships. So, Megan, how yeah. if somebody's trying to find you online, we've already talked about your Facebook fan page, but go ahead and, and repeat that address for people, and I'll have a link below, and where else can we find you online, like on Model Mayhem or wherever? Where are your portfolios so people can follow you? Um, I have a portfolio um, on my fan page, www.facebook.com slash Um And I have one over at misssocialnetwork.com, www.misssocialnetwork.com. Um, I miss February, so I have a banner right on the front site. And like I said, last I knew I was in the top four, so I'm very easily accessible. On that site, um, join, leave me a message. I'll be competing again here in January. I know it sounds like it's a ways off, but all the girls who won a month this year will be competing for the title in January. And um, I'd like to start building up my army now, so to speak. And then I have um, my page on Facebook, which I actually I think I reached my friend request limit, so you can subscribe and get my um, post. Well, I, I think you got like oh, three, six, three or 6,000 subscribers. So, I mean, fan, the profiles are just like fan pages now, except you don't get the statistics and stuff like that. It actually may be to your benefit to grow your profile now instead of your fan page because of what Facebook is doing. I think you still yeah. all, your message gets out to all your friends, but it just may not get out to all your fans. So that's kind of a 
Yeah. That's kind of a big deal right now, trying to figure out what, how you want to grow it. But um, Yeah, or well, I think you can promote, your, promote yourself on both. Like, share your fan page on your profile page and share, mm-hmm. your, share your profile page and be like, subscribe to me here so you don't miss anything. Like, want to yeah. keep up on what I'm doing. And like you said, just keeping people engaged. And I mean, and even if you take a month off and you're like, I'm kind of not going to do any competitions, get to know your fans for a little bit or promote some other girls who are doing competitions that you might want to do. Um, I promoted a girl, um, her name's Amanda Marie Scott, last month on Poker Centerfolds. Poker Centerfolds was something I wanted to do. She befriended me, wanted some support. Sure, you know, I'd love to support you. Why? Because eventually when I decide I want to do this, who's going to have my dad, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So... You know, kind of, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. And like I said, it doesn't always pan out, but for the most part, it does. Um, yeah, so I look forward to shoot me an email, um, post on my page, whatever. I'd love to hear from anyone. So. All right. Well, thank you very much, Megan. Um, for everyone listening, if you want to join the American Wing Girls uh, community, it's just a place for, you know, uh, people to support each other. Um, help each other with promotional questions um, about getting work at different places. Uh, it's it's a Facebook group, so I mean you can join and not you can unjoin as as you want. Uh, there will be links below this this uh, podcast where you can do that. And um, also go to iTunes and and um, leave a rating and a, a review for so we can grow on iTunes. Um, so there's a link below this podcast for that as well but we thank you for being on this podcast and thank you again megan for being here thank you it's a lot of fun all right we'll see you next time thanks for listening to the american wing girls modeling podcast if you like what you just heard we hope you'll pass along our web address www.americanwinggirls.com to your friends and colleagues be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts This has been an American Wing Girls production. Join us next time for another edition of the American Wing Girls podcast.